All right, the project at hand right now is with this excavator. The last job I had it on, I dug a long underground trench for a underground electric service and quickly into the job, the main pin broke where the bucket and the thumb hinge. And here it is here in two pieces. And to continue doing the job, what I did is I just kind of went to the steel yard and bought a piece of round stock and stuck it in there and finished the job like that. It did work. On this side, I just welded a piece of rebar. And on this side, I drilled through it and put a bolt in there. And that worked. Problem is, that piece of metal I used was too small. I went to the local steel yard. They're talking inches and this was in millimeters. So I was saying 40 millimeter. You know, it didn't work. So I could just buy the replacement part from Kubota, but I don't want to do that because they kind of made a flawed design on this. The problem with this, this is a greasable pin, meaning on this side here, there is a grease fitting and it's drilled hollow through the center all the way to right here, the middle. And then they have, you can see it's drilled hollow through the center here. And then it came out to right here. And then what they had was a groove cut right in the middle of the thing so the, the grease would flow out evenly to keep it greased. Now that's that's just going to break again because that's asking for that to break. So I want to make my own pin and I'm not going to make it greasable like that. It's just going to be a solid piece of metal with no groove cut in the center for it to shear. And then I'll install the grease fitting in the uh, boom itself. All right, let's get to work. Wow, look how that bent. All right, this has got to come off too because these ears kind of got bent. Is this worn out or are those grooves supposed to be in this thing? Huh. You can see how that's where the grease port, the grease port goes from, the grease port goes from right there to there. All right, well that one's okay. Let's. All right, so on this thing, the, it kind of got bent with that old pin. These things are separated more than they're supposed to be. So let's fix that. All right, that's bending fine. How? Let's not go too much though. All right, let's see. This should be. What is that? Five and a. Five and an eighth. We're aiming for. All right, so there's five. I probably got to go past it because it's going to spring back a little bit. There's four, seven, eight. Let's loosen it up. Nope, two. All right, that's still. Let's take it to four and three quarters.
All right. Oh, that's... Five and an ace, all right, let's try that. Well, I think it'll go. I may have made it a little tight, but uh, I'll force it together. It's time to install the grease fitting so these are eighth inch national pipe tap we got a tap set and there's the there it is for the eighth inch national pipe thread and then this set is nice it's got the chart all right so there were eighth inch national pipe thread and they want us to use 21 64ths Now it's cutting really nice. Now sometimes if it starts getting hard, you know, you, you go a little bit, then back up. Go a little bit, back up. And you can use oil too to help it cut. And right, put this in there at that 45 on it. That should be the best. filings let's see hey right, look at that cleaned it up all right so once we get this together we'll see what grease fitting is the best we could either put a straight a 45 or a 90 in there um, and if it looks like it's going to get smashed, you put a big nut over it. I don't think that's going to be an issue here. All right, let's make our pin now. All right, so this is what we got here. Um, there's a new metal. I couldn't get this from a local steel yard because they only deal with SAE measurements. So I got it from a hydraulic cylinder place. You know, they make all different size rods all the time. Look at that, I cut pretty square. And now let's put a uh, point on this because this is gonna have a hard time getting in that piece. That will help it go in, especially because I know things aren't going to be lining up good.
All right, so here's the finished product right there. I just touched it up with a grinder just to, but that's why I V'd that out. And so there's plenty of weld on there. So my plan is this is gonna slide over that. I'll drill down and have a bolt hold that on. But this is too, I need something thicker here. So I was gonna use this washer, but I need to cut the center out. And I'm out of torch gas here. And my plasma cutter's at my other garage. So I'm gonna try to hole saw that. Which is gonna be hard, cause there's no, let's try it on the drill press. Nice. All right, now we gotta drill a hole down through this and we're done. Pretty good. All right, great. All right, you can let off. All right, now we just gotta get the thumb lined up. All right, give it a few taps.
All right, we got some missing teeth here, and the teeth that are on here, you know, that's that's nonsense. So let's uh, There's the grease coming out there. All right, yeah, that works fine. I don't think that grease fitting will ever get smashed. All right, and everything I messed with took grease. So that that's fixed. Let's go uh, try it out. Well, that was fun. So time will tell how that holds up, but you know, I feel like that's fixed better than it was when it was brand new. So I doubt that will ever have an issue. Um, so, you know, that was fun making that too, because I saved a lot of money doing that. Buying that pin from Kubota would have been expensive. You know, all those materials I used on that were relatively cheap and I kind of showed how to do it with cheap tools. I mean, the only thing I used was like a, a stick welder. Those are like 300 bucks brand new. An angle grinder and a drill press. So, you know, that's cool. You don't need to spend a fortune on metalworking tools to do a repair like that. All right, well, this machine's ready to work and I've got a job lined up for it now. So let's bring it out to that job tomorrow. It's getting dark out. Right, Levi? Right?